I'm Cameron Giesemann with Giesemann Homes. This is Get to Know Your Neighbor. Um, we are a bit late joining in, but hopefully um, that's okay. Our goal from the beginning was to always bring kind of awareness of amazing neighbors of Fishers, Indiana. And we honestly are really thankful that we've been able to share each of our guest stories with you, our viewers. You can catch us each week. Um, we're on, we come live on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Usually at 7.30, we've had some technical difficulties, so that's put us back just a little bit. Don't forget to click the like button below, post an emoji or comment below. And if you have a friend that we could showcase or you think that maybe they'd be interested in the topic that we're talking about, maybe share it to them as well. If you're watching this as a replay, either on Facebook or YouTube, please make sure to follow or subscribe to get notified when we post. Tonight, our guest is Lisa Graft, who I'm going to call a mompreneur. She has done many things from working in communications at Olivet Nazarene University to being a co-host on Z99 and a Half's Radio Theology and mom-inspiring blogger. But the recurring theme, honestly, about Lisa is her amazing storytelling ability. What started as a blog and Facebook page, her I am mother of the year page has grown by leaps and bounds and now reaches so many moms across the country with many changes happening in Lisa's life. She's more driven and passionate recently about building a tribe of moms who are encouraged, celebrated and committed to helping other moms feel the same way. I can't wait to hear all about her new adventure and goals for how us moms me being definitely one of them, can be better versions of ourselves. Lisa has also decided to offer a What's True About You journal um, for our giveaway tonight. So make sure to stay tuned for that giveaway as well. So please welcome Lisa Graft. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Sorry for all the technical difficulties, everybody. We are working through it. <laughs> you know what? It's all good. It's one of those, like I said before we went live, you know, it is, it's technology is a good thing. And sometimes you just want to punch it. Uh, yes. <laughs> Perfect when it's working. Oh, yes. What I love for all of our viewers, I texted Lisa and was like, I really want to scream right now because we couldn't get our internet going. And she goes, scream away. Yep. And if I hear you from way over here on the other side of Fishers, I hear you. You know, yep. what? it's fine. Sometimes we we do. We just we have to, <laughs> we have to scream. Well, I want to kind of jump in pretty quickly here because it is somewhat about Fishers. Fisher, so we're going to start about Fishers first. But what have you liked most about living in Fishers? Um, the people. It's just, it's all about community for myself and then for my family as well. So our neighborhood is awesome uh, because we, it's just like, it's the, the kids are playing and the parents are out talking and it's just like, I'm sure they're around here somewhere. Uh, and it's just like, and we've waited for that for so long. My daughter is almost six. Um, so she's the one that gets a little freedom. My son is three and it does not go that far unless no. he's run away. But, um, but so we've kind of waited on that, those days of like, just go get out of here, get out of here and go play. And so that's what our neighborhood does. And that's been amazing. Um, and so between the community and the people and um, all the food, I mean, there's so much good food in Fishers. And I just like the quickest way to my heart is through my stomach. And so I'm, I'm just a happy girl. It's gotten better. I have to admit, you know, how long have you lived in Fishers? 10 years. Okay. So a decent amount. I like that we're getting more and more. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's because there wasn't, I mean, when Adam and I were in high school, there was, none. let's be honest, there were <laughs> McDonald's, maybe two. Um, what, um, if a friend kind of, you know, if you guys were hanging out and a friend told you, you were considering that they were considering moving to the Fishers area, what would you say to them about our city? Like what kind of keeps you here? 
Well, what, what brought us here, at least my husband, he moved a year earlier than I did. And he came because it was like ranked number one in the country for places to live. And so he's like, he'd already lived in the Indy area, but he's like, okay, I'm choosing Fishers. And so um, I think I would still have to lean into the people. Like, it's just, there's just something about the people that even if you don't know them, you feel like you do. Right. And so I don't know, it just kind of feels like there's a commonality. I'll agree with that. I think that's a good way to put it too, because I think a lot of times, and even to a certain extent why we did the show is because you feel that, right? But you don't always know the people. Right. Which yeah, is exactly. Yeah. I love that you came because it was the number one area to live. I love I hearing that. Yeah, yeah. Because you see it. Like mm -hmm. it's announced, but you don't always hear that, right? Like, because yep. there's a lot of different, everybody has their different reasoning. And I love kind of hearing what people's reasoning is. So, well, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're part of one of our neighbors. Um, but for all of our viewers, they didn't really probably come to hear about Fisher, even though we love Fishers. So let's dive into kind of who Lisa Graft is. So tell us what because I've mentioned now on my Instagram and um, Facebook, the I am mother of the year, which I've been a part of, but what would you say it is and what was the journey as to, you know, what started it? Uh, what it, what it is, is a movement. Okay. And so that's the, it's like to call it a blog is like, nah, it's not enough. Um, and to call it a Facebook group is not enough. And so what it is and started to be a movement and my hope and my goal still to this day is to change mom culture, to make an impact, to push back against the culture of judgment and this fear-based mothering and move into a culture of celebration and encouragement. And so it started from really a need that I had as a brand new mom uh, because motherhood was not what I expected it to be especially right at first, uh, I was filled with a lot of like guilt and shame and a, lo a lot of fear. Like, wait, if I don't love the baby stage, does that mean I don't love my baby? And am I a bad mom? And like, I'm doing the best I can. I love my girl, but I'm like, this, this is for the birds. I'm telling you what, <laughs> like the newborn stage is the worst. And you can't say that when you're pregnant or when you have a newborn. You just can't. But I'm like, somebody needs to tell these mothers. <laughs> and so I just thought, you know what? I looked for the voice that could tell me that. And there was no voice. And so I, one day, was feeding Josie. So this was about three years ago um, because Calvin was um, a brand new little, back in that newborn stage. And um I was feeding Josie, so she was almost three at the time, peanut butter and jelly for the third night in a row for dinner. And I felt such shame. Like all of the, you should be seriously. So all of this negative self-talk just spiraling out of control in my mind. And of course the hormones and all the things, they don't help. But no. I was so, I was so like distraught about it that I, called myself sarcastically mother of the year and that's that's how this entire thing started it started out of sarcasm and it was me sarcastically awarding myself for being a total screw up you know which in, in hindsight uh three peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that's not the bad way to go you know yeah and, and so i something about that stuck and so the next day and the next day and the next day, I would, I would start looking for ways that I was mother of the year today. And it was, it stayed sarcastic for a long time before I started realizing that my outlook on motherhood, my outlook on my entire life was changing because I was started to look for the good. And instead of being swallowed and drowned up in a victim of the bad, I was choosing to look for the good without even knowing it. And then when I started celebrating the small things, uh, that kind of opened my imagination to say, wait, I, I'm, I'm good at the big things too. Like, I'm okay. 
I'm not perfect by any means. I am like, I'm more towards the hot mess end than <laughs> I am to the Pinterest perfect mom. I am too. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm like, yeah, I eat over here quite often. But I'm like, that's okay. That's okay. That's who I am. That's fine. And so I thought, man, if I, if I needed so badly to hear that I was okay, then other moms must need to hear that. And so I just, it just was like one thing after the other that it, I like created these I Am Mother of the Year stickers to pass out to moms as random acts of kindness. And it just grew and grew and grew. And then the Facebook community, I started with 43 of my mom friends and has grown now to over 4,400 women around the country and around the world. And we're just celebrating each other. That's all we're doing. And we're celebrating ourselves. And so the goal is post a win for you. And then let us jump on board and just celebrate the heck out of you because you're doing okay. And so that's what it's grown into and still is to this day. Well, and I even love, so I've watched, because I have I have to admit I've watched from afar a little bit, but um, I have noticed even it's not, you know what I love about it is people aren't just always posting their wins, they're also posting some of their failures, and yet during those failures, all the moms around them are going, no, I did that yesterday, or like, look at all of what you did do. You know what I mean? And so that's what I, I kept going back and watching or kind of like tipping my toes in. Yeah. Because it was, and I felt like other moms were supporting other moms in the good, the bad and the ugly. Right. Yeah. That's exactly so, how it is. Yeah. yeah. And it, we're, while it's not meant to be a, uh, an advice platform by any means, right. it really turns into that. And my goal is that moms would feel okay celebrating themselves. And even though we do, um, I used to do it consistently and I've fallen off the wagon, but hot mess Mondays, you know, oh, share, yes! your, share your hot mess. I, I mean, it's, I have them every day. So it's just so easy. Like there's no need to like, what am I going to talk about today? It's like, how am I going to choose? And so I like, so hot mess Mondays, but I never leave it as here's my hot mess. It's like, here's my mess, but here's my redemptive moment. Like, here's the turnaround to that. Or here's something totally unrelated, but I'm going to choose to look at the good instead of look at the bad. And so that's when I'm like, tell me your hot mess, but tell me your redemptive moment too. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. So it started out as that and it's grown, but you've even talked about even more than that of what it is today. So can you kind of talk about how it's kind of grow growing to a certain extent? Yeah. Yeah. It really evolved naturally and it evolved out of, um, again, this personal growth and pain areas in, in my own life. And so I have been committed from the beginning to sharing my mess first. And so in doing that, I started sharing um, the fight for my identity. And like, and it slowly and surely, like the way you actually do slow, painful growth, it like, that's how long and, and just, oh, so hard to do. But I just kept taking steps towards that. And then along the way, I just started saying, hey, come with me. I found this freedom. I found this freedom and I want you to have this too. And inviting other moms on that journey to really discover like what's true about them. So I mean, what's true about you is the name of my guided journal um, that you could win towards the end. Yes. Um, <laughs> and what's true about you is what I tell women. When I get the opportunity to speak to moms, that is what I just bang the drum over and over of what's true about you. Because when you know what's true about you, then you become the woman that God created you to be. The woman, the mother, but the woman as a whole. And you start to see motherhood as a beautiful, incredible layer of who you are, but not the sole factor for your identity. Do you find, um, that's so great. Do you find that, um, it's harder for people to, um, cause you are right. You're going on your Facebook page and, or even your blog and saying, you're raising a hand and saying, you know, these are the things that, you know, <laughs> I did this today, but this was the good. Do you find that over time of 
doing this that you're finding people are feeling more comfortable saying kind of, you know, what's either gone wrong or where they've made a mistake, but where that helped grow them? Do you find that that's transitioned, yeah. hopefully? Yes, I think so. Um, and it's not it's not for everyone. And that's not meant to be exclusive or shame inducing at all. It's meant to say it's like you have to really choose a journey of becoming. And so if you want to stay stuck, like in the chaos, in the overwhelm, feeling hopeless, you can, like, that's your choice. And I know that there are moms who do that because they don't have the imagination that it could be any other way for them. And so, um, yeah, so there are some moms who love, love, love the I Am Mother of the Year Facebook group. And I'm glad and they live in it and they're just, yes, it's all, it's so good. But then there are moms who want more. And so when they're ready, it's like, okay, here, come over here. Let's talk a little bit more about what's true about you. And to serve that mom, just three weeks ago, we launched um, the first ever I Am Mother of the Year boot camp, which is incredible. It's, so, it's hard, but it's hard work. Yeah. It's like, it's so hard. I, I mean, I built the content. Like I wrote this program and I'm even kind of scared to go through it myself. Because it's so good because it makes you think and it doesn't make you think a lot about the happy at first. It makes you right. think about really hard things and you have to commit to that. And it's a really hard sell to tell a mom who's already feeling just completely overwhelmed and drowning in chaos and probably some comparison. You're not meeting the expectations of yourself and others. And the list goes on and on and on. Hey, why don't you sit in some pain for a while? Won't that? It, I promise it'll be worth it, you know, but that, that's where I'm like, but it's actually going to be worth it. I've seen yeah. it worth it in my own life. Uh, and that's just the gift that I want to keep offering to moms. Which I think is great. We are going to dive into that a little bit more because I do want to kind of know a little bit more of that for our, for our, for our guests, for our audience to kind of know like what, okay, what are the next steps? So we'll get to that. Um, I did mention, um, for at least for people to kind of know what your background is. Um, my question was a little bit about radio theology. But can you kind of tell us what your path has been? Of like, okay, what you've done and how it's kind of transitioned you and or what did you, you know, my question originally, was like, what did you learn from radio theology that you're kind of yeah. asking? But can you kind of tell people, you know, why listen to Lisa? Like what, what took you to that place or what is kind of your background, so to speak? Sure. Yeah. My, my background is, and has always been in storytelling and that has shown up on stages and behind microphones in a variety of different ways. And when I like plot out my life map, it's the storytelling that's always been the high for me. Those are my highest points of my life. Um, and my mom really actually instilled this value of story within me. And so, um, even when Oprah, do you remember when she started her own network? I think yes. it was even her phone. Um, yeah. but she was, she just put the call out for, if you've got show ideas, da, 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 like submit. So I yeah. submitted just a show about storytelling and I just want to hear yeah. everyone's stories. I didn't get chosen, obviously. Otherwise, we probably would not be having this conversation. But, but I just, like, looking back, I was like, oh, my gosh. I was in college, I think. And it was so important to me even then. Wow. And so, and so I just kind of grew into that but naturally fell into radio. And so I started in a country morning show in Illinois. And then I had my own hour long talk show for a little bit. And, okay. it was, but then I spent, I moved to Indianapolis and got, I had five years of Christian radio experience um, in Indianapolis and Chicagoland and Michigan. And, um, and so when I had Josie, I, I took a break from that because uh, having do the, doing the morning show at 6am live is when you open your mic. Um, that's not conducive to having a newborn. No. And so I, I, I moved away from radio, which is always one of the hardest things to do because once you've been bitten by the radio bug, it's really hard to let that go. And so it was um, probably a year later that 
um, Darren Earlywine and Ryan Allwart called me simultaneously. They were together and they said, and I didn't know Darren at the time, but I knew Ryan. And he's like, have you ever thought about getting back on the radio? And I was like, are you, are you kidding me? Because I was literally just praying in my car. God, I think I want to speak more to women. I need to influence women. I know you've given me this voice. I, I don't have anywhere to put it. So can you give me something? And those prayers have never, not one time has it ever been like, da-da. But this time it was. It was literally, I said, amen. And five minutes later, the phone rang. And it was Ryan. And that was it. So I met Darren the very next day. And then 10 days later, we were live on the radio together. Um, and it was really, so what sets me up, like why you should listen to me is a little bit because those two men valued and affirmed my voice in ways that no one else has. And so they, instead of like cornering me as the, the laughing girl, the color commentary, like really valued my voice and, and then helped like in, in my personal life and in my professional life and in starting I am mother of the year, it was, there was never a doubt in their minds that I couldn't do it. And so that, that was part of it going, well, if, well, if they think I can, of course I can, you right. know, and then they, they never, ever let me fall. And so that's, so that's part of it. And then the other part is I honestly feel like this is just, this is not even my message. This is like, God has this message for you and I'm, I'm the one that's going to tell you about it. And you know what? And I'm going to laugh and cry and I'm going to be a little awkward. You know what? I hope it's a little more endearing <laughs> than it is off-putting, but that's what I honestly believe. And for any, like, no matter where you're at on your faith journey, like this message is for you. Yeah. I agree with all of that. I think I, you know, it's interesting because my, so to give a little history of mine, my dad was a radio host as well. Oh. Went to IU. Yep. Went to IU. We moved to California. So I was born in California. And it's so funny because I always growing up, I didn't really tell a whole lot of people, but I wanted to uh, be the next Barbara Walters. Yeah. And so when I was talking to Ryan, we're going to talk about Ryan Albert. I don't think he's on, but I'm going to have to give him a hard time because he's news, you lose, Ryan. You're missing out. <laughs> Anyways, so when I was talking with him, I thought it was funny because I always just was enthralled by her and always thought it was just amazing what she was able to do. And so I feel you in that sense of like, I've always been a connector and I've always wanted to try to connect people and talk with people. I think I, it's interesting because I'll run into somebody and they'll be like, I ask a hundred questions of them. Like I typically, like sometimes I'll talk about myself, but it's, I'll ask you a hundred questions and you almost feel overwhelmed. Like, dear Lord, does this woman ever stop asking questions? Oh. Um, and so when Ryan and I were talking about this, I feel you. Cause I feel like this is for me even kind of that, like, it's just what I want to do. You know what I mean is bring, I want people to know other people. Yeah. So it's kind of like you, like you're just wanting to get for all of, all of us moms to know that it's okay. And it is hard to work a job, right? And mm -hmm. however, whatever job that is, even if it's a stay-at-home mom, because I'm sorry, but all the stay-at-home moms, you have a job. Oh, yes. I couldn't the hardest do it. Job. <laughs> yes. Thank you. No way. I couldn't do it. Tried it for a year. Peace out. Like, <laughs> I couldn't do it. And so and that's okay. <laughs> right. And so it's interesting because I love hearing you say that that's okay because there are a lot of times where you'll say that and a mom will give you that look. And it's like, we're, we're all in this together. Yep. And we all have to support each other and, and love on each other because what looks good for you might not look good for me, but that's okay. Right. Right. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that God has given you that path and that like conviction to share that with women because 
more people need to hear it. Yeah. Well, and it's funny too, because I started as, and still am, I'm a type two on the Enneagram. So I'm the supportive helper. Uh, and that's like, I live and breathe. I will help you. And then I wing three, which is the achiever. So I'm going to help you better than anyone is ever going to help you ever. <laughs> you know, and so I'm like, I'm like an overachiever of helpers. And sometimes I get a little annoying if I'm a little insecure and I'm not like, like healthy, then I'm like, I'm going to help you. And you're like, I don't, I don't need your help. Um, but I'm trying to remember who said this, but Darren Erlewine, he's the one who said, ha, says this in his spiritual DNA course. Um, but it's maybe Van Halen. I don't know. Some guitar guy. I don't know. Some musician, somebody somewhere said there's two kinds of people in the world. There's the, there's help do people and there's have to people. And so in my life, I have been the help do person. And now since this vision and mission and movement has begun, I have to, I have to do this. I have to say this. And so I will, I'm going to keep saying it until like I get the all clear, you know, which I assume is never going to happen. No, women are still going to keep having babies. And so that, so it's, and part of it, let me just clarify too. It's okay if you're a help do person and you stay a help do person forever. We need, the whole world needs a million billion help do people. Otherwise the have to people would get nothing done. And I can tell you that from being the help do person, helping the have to person accomplish something, they would have never made it without me, you know? <laughs> and right. that's what I thought my role was for a while until it, I have like grown into this, like, have to do it. Why do you think that women in general, I know this isn't a question, but why do you feel like women don't want to tell other women really what it's like? Because like you said at the beginning, like I was never a, like, I like small kids, but I like to give them back to you. Yeah. Yep. Like I'll hold them. Sure. Oh, and then, like, I really think I'm going to be really good at grandparenting. Because mm -hmm. I'll love on them. And then, here you go. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, why do you, do you, have you kind of looked into that? Like, why? Because people don't, we don't talk about it. You're just supposed to love it. All parts. Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And if you don't love every minute of it, it makes you a bad mom. And so then... You identify with the bad moms and scary mommy and all of these like kind of positive, negative voices. And it, it gets confusing. Like, but I, so I don't, I don't know why. Um, and part of the reason is I think lots, some women really do love it. And so maybe their voices are louder. Like, I don't know. But I, I believe that we all will have a season of motherhood that we're like, oh, this is my sweet spot in motherhood. But so far, I've, I've not found that. Or at least I hope I haven't because I'm like, I have to believe that better days are coming for me as a mother. They um, I have a feeling you're a little like me. I have to admit I'm enjoying right now partially because they're in the stage where they still want to hug me. Yeah. Oh, good. They, they still like me, except oh, yeah. when raging mom comes out. Um, and raging mom does come out. Um, but they're like, consider it, and they're kind, and our oldest just turned 13, so that might be changing for him. Um, but I like, I like this stage, because I feel like I'm helping them. Yeah maybe kind of find themselves. And I think through this, like even with what you're doing, I wonder if helping them find, like helping moms find who they are, that they then are better versions of themselves to help their children. Yes, exactly. And just a disclaimer, my phone's about to die because I thought oh. I was going to do this on my computer. So I'm just going to run upstairs real quick. Get yeah. a charger and run back down. <laughs> so yeah. sorry about that. All right. Uh, no, that's all right. Um, as, as Lisa's doing that, 
Um, what I will do is, as a reminder to everybody that's watching, Lisa did say that she is doing a um, giveaway, which is really, really great. She's giving away um, one of her journals. So you can actually go to her website, um, and on her website, she has different things. Like she mentioned the sticker and stuff, but she has a journal called What's True About You Journal, and she's going to be giving that away. So we've got a question that we've kind of put in the queue, so stay tuned, and you'll be able to answer answer the question below and be able to win that. But um, we are talking with Lisa Graft. I call her my mom newer because she's always kind of thinking and shifting and changing and just being a better version of herself. So that's what I absolutely love. And um, we're going to do that giveaway here later. But um, it's really great kind of hearing that there are other moms out there that you know, are having struggles or challenges or whatever. And it looks like she's back in her spot, so we'll bring her back on. But uh, <laughs> um, as Ryan Allward always says, I have to do this thing called reset. Mm -hmm. Yep, you got to reset the show. I know. See, in radio, you guys do that all the time, I think. Yeah, yep. I'm not used to it, and I also feel like it's really cheesy and awkward. Like, And by the way, I'm Cameron Giesman, even though it's right on the screen, and this is Lisa Graft, and it's right, like, it just feels, he makes it look so smooth. Oh, he makes everything look so smooth. It's true. I know. <laughs> kind of annoying. It's but, not fair. So it's unfair. That's a better way to say it than <laughs> my annoying aspect. But um, so, okay. So with your, I kind of, the next question was kind of what are, what are the future plans for um, I am mother of the year, but I'm going to change that a little bit. Adam's probably going to post it on the screen, but my question is, cause you kind of talked about it, which is the boot camp, right? Yeah. And so can yeah. you kind of describe I'm visioning this, and tell me if I'm wrong, this woman who has watched or been a part of I Am Mother of the Year and really enjoys it, but kind of wants to work on themselves can be a part of the boot camp. So what does that look like, or what is the goal, what is the future goal with that? So with boot camp, it, uh, it's a six-week online it was meant to just be like a community. We we're going to rally. And then as we started building it, it just became, it took on this life of its own. And so it's boot camp because it's camo and it's military themed because we firmly believe that we are in a battle. Every day is a battle for our voice and our value and our identity. Uh, and so we're like, let's, let's not sugarcoat this and let's just go for it. Like, let's go for the jugular because until you know what you're fighting for and fighting against, you don't like, you're not prepared to battle. And so that, that's the goal is to really help moms move from feeling um, this overwhelm, the expectations, like always feeling like you're not enough. You're never doing enough. You can never say enough or you say too much. It just, the right. spinning and spinning, like the mental load of mothers, all of that, it, it takes a toll. And mostly it's because we're believing lies about who we are. And so right now we're held captive by these lies. Like we are in like the POW camp and we are stuck. And, and so the goal is let's surround each other as a platoon and we're going to face the front lines together and we're going to fight, fight, fight for our freedom. Um, and it's like this fight, this battle will go on forever. I mean, there's a series of battles and all of this, but um, like I said, until you know what you're fighting against, how are you going to win? And so there's no way for us to, to, to remove your chaos or overwhelm or past pain or future worry none of that but we are equipping moms and teaching them how to armor up and so when you are armed and ready and dangerous and you have a clear target and you start your day with intention that's a pretty good start to the day and so you just kind of create space in there for when the lies start coming at you and and all of these anxieties and negative feelings and frustrations and all of this they're just flaming arrows meant to take you down 
uh, when you're prepared and you're like, okay, it, it's less of a surprise, um, maybe still painful. You might still lose to it, but you know, but it's, it's better to have the knowledge and the practice to armor up. And so that's what, that's what this is. But because it's for moms, we are, we're committed to it's, there's a few days that it might be 10 minutes um, of like an exercise that you're working through. And it depends on how much you want to get out of it, how deeply you want to, to dig into your own story. But it's, it's usually it's five minutes or less a day. Okay. And then it's, and then it's the constant companionship of your platoon, this group. And um, so it's, it's been great, but hard. It sounds amazing. I will say I have a couple of people that have kind of popped on that are not moms yet. Do you think that it would fit into those individuals that aren't moms yet, but can give them kind of the arsenal for when they are moms? Oh, for sure. Yes. Yeah. So down the road, who knows how far down the road, but part of the vision is, man, if somebody would have told me before I became a mom, all of these things that maybe I would have been better equipped. Yeah. Um, and so that, that for sure is a goal down the road, but even so like the journal, this what's true about you guided journal, here it is. We're going to give that away a little bit later. It's the most beautiful thing ever. It's not written for moms. It's written for all women. And it has stories in there from like a 13 year old girl all the way through an empty nester and talking about each of the lies that they believe specifically. And then what the truth is that they've learned to replace that with, and then what that ushers into their life. And so, um, so yes, I mean, the principle is for everyone. Uh, but because I'm a mom and I'm niched down to moms, that's who I typically talk to. One of our friends uh, posted this, which I know it's a really loaded comment, but um, she, it pretty much the gist of it is, is that, you know, there was a movement that kind of went on to kind of give you what it looks like as a mom, as a job. Um, and it is, I 100% agree, it is one of the toughest jobs in the world. Yes. Like, so Cody, thank you for sharing that with us because it is. And even at that, I think that, um, you know, when I worked in HR for a small stint, whenever we had a mom who was like a stay at home mom that then was looking for a job, mm -hmm. always a good hire. Yes. Oh, a thousand percent. Like, yeah, just, you want a no nonsense multitasker? Done. Right? <laughs> and driven. Like, yeah. In a, in a different way. Because. I'm sorry for all of my moms that I, like I give you kudos. I don't know why I say sorry because I'm giving you kudos. Like I, I literally, I did it for a year. Our twins, when I, we delivered the twins, I took a year off. And I will say that that was the hardest year, even though when I got back into real estate, I was raising three children from home and in between naps and feedings and all that, that's when I did my real estate stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that was easier than just doing three children. Yep, yeah. Because I got away for a minute. <laughs> yes, well, and you got to invest some time into yourself and just create a little bit of space around you. Yeah. And so, and that's what I think the battle is for stay-at-home moms. Um, whether you love it or hate it, you like you have to learn to create that space. You do. And it's when you don't, then you completely lose sight of who you are. Um, and then, and that's when the, and that's when the bad stuff starts ha happening. You know, we start um, just projecting all of our hopes and dreams and fears onto our kids. And um, there's so many things that, that, and I do that as a working mom, but I'm like, I know I've, I've seen stay at home moms time and time again, just completely lose themselves and their kids. And it's heartbreaking that like, yeah. That breaks my heart. What is space, says Cody? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is um, space? Let me, tell you. let me tell you what space is. Space is um, when your kids are in the car and you have to get gas. And even if it's negative 45, you are standing outside pumping the gas because this is about 90 seconds worth of space. 
that's that space. And sometimes that's the only space you get in the day until your head hits the pillow. And then you don't get space because your brain just goes and goes and goes and goes until you fall asleep. And then you wake up and do it all again the next day. Yeah. And so that is, that's the space. And that's the challenge um, for probably for women in general, but for moms, especially is to take those little moments and claim them as space and like be intentional, even with the 90 seconds. Yeah. And give yourself grace. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, sure. I mean, here's the thing. I need a lot of grace. Yeah. Like, because that's the thing. Like I have to give myself grace because if I don't, then that's when I go into a dark hole. Yeah. yeah and, that's that's right. why, and that's why I love this. I love that you're calling it a movement because it is a movement. And I think that we need to embrace each other and support each other and know that it's okay that you only got 90 seconds of space. Yeah. It's not sustainable. No. But, but yeah. But so then the next day, can you look for five minutes? Um, and then can you reach out to your support system and say, right. if I don't get an hour, I'm going to lose my mind. <sighs> and it's part of inviting people into community. But again, sometimes we're so prideful that we cannot ask for help. Right. Um, because it's such a sign of weakness. That yep. we're, we're supposed to be juggling all of these things and we're supposed to make it look super easy. And so we do on Instagram and Facebook. And then when people ask us how we're doing, we just very smile and your eyes get kind of big. Like, I'm great. It's, it's, everything's amazing. You know what my favorite yeah, friends are? Hard. My favorite mom friends are friends like Cody, where I might not talk to her for three months because I literally are just trying to survive. But yeah. yet when I do talk with her, like she's giving me that grace or I'm giving her that grace of yeah. saying, dude, I get it. Like, you don't need to talk to me every day. Like, I, because sometimes we just don't want to talk about stuff or we have stuff going on. Like, like I, you know, it's always interesting when you post on Facebook or whatever and you, you know, you'll say something like it was a struggle today. My favorite posts are you'll get through this or not the, well, what's going on or what's because a lot of times you, you don't want to talk about that. Like right. there's been some struggles recently that Adam and I have gone through that we don't want to, I don't want to specifically talk about, but if, if I call you, like you're there for me, but yet you're, you're on, you know, like Cody, I'm always thinking about her. Right. Like, yeah. And that's what I love about your group is, is that I feel like there really isn't that judgment. Right. right. Yep. We need those. It's against the rules. <laughs> it's, it's in the it's rules. The rules. Yep, it's in the rules. <laughs> yeah. Because there's so much judgment in this world that I'm just, especially recently with everything that's going on, you know, if you wear a mask, if you don't wear a mask, if you post this or you post that, like everything's become so judgmental that it's like the last thing we as moms need right now is judgment. Right. From another mom. Right. From another mom, you're no. We're supposed to be like we're. What I thought you were. Oh no! Like you're not naturally on my side, right? And then, yeah, it just it doesn't matter. And there's so when I first started um, giving out these I Mother of the Year stickers, I the first mom I ever no, it wasn't the first mom I gave it to, but it was the first mom who ever joined the group um and like commented i got this sticker and oh my gosh and it made my day and it was um it was this this mom who i saw in Coles, and she was pregnant and i overheard her talking about how she's like trying to adopt her son and it's like the, all of the struggles she just pouring out to the cashier and so i just went up to her and said you know what i heard part of your story i think you're a really great mom just keep it up man, it's hard. And we hugged and I mean, the whole deal, you know, but it doesn't matter in that moment if she's going to nurse her baby or if she formula feeds or if she sleep trains or she co-sleeps or right. not, not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're all doing the best that we can. And we can all still be friends. Even if we do something differently, it's even, it's like any topic, right? When you're talking yes. about, you know, religion or, or politics or anything, right? It's like, we've become a society that if I don't agree with you, Lisa, I can unfriend you. And it's like, well, why? 
we yeah. we different. Like I don't know if y'all remember, but when I went to Thanksgiving dinners, I'm sorry, but my family would argue and they would like battle, <laughs> and then two minutes later we'd be all laughing. Yeah, I feel like we've lost that. Yeah, for sure. Well, and it's easier to um, poof disappear someone than to. Oh. Kind of, it's really is a vulnerability on your part to say, okay, what's what is it in me that's fighting so hard against this? Like, what do I need to learn and understand, and continue to invite vulnerability from their side? Yes. And because it's just, it's so much easier to just go, oh, okay, bye, out right. of sight, out of mind, see ya. And it's okay to agree to disagree. Yes, yes. If your relationship is is strong enough then 1000%. Yeah. You, like that's, it's a must. That's why strong relationships exist in the first place. Right. And I think that again, that's why I've always enjoyed seeing your Facebook posts on I am mother of the year because I love the diversity. I love the ability to be like, I might not agree with that, but it's still good content. You know what I mean? Like it's still good information and we can still support each other. I might not have done that, but kudos for you in that moment. Right. Yep. Yeah. Cause that's a, motherhood is basically summed up as like, you're doing the absolute best that you can do in each moment. Yes. And, and sometimes so you don't even have time to think about it. You just act. At least that's me. I mean, that's kind of my whole life. <laughs> like well, I jump in first and I'm like, what, what's happening? What, what did I, what did I cause a mess? Did I jump into a mess? Both. There have been many moments as my husband would laugh about <laughs> where I, he comes home and I go, guess what I did? And he's like, what, 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 what did you do? And I'm like, I know I just did it. Yep. It's done. It either worked or it didn't. And yep. you won't know until they're telling their therapist when they're 35. <laughs> right. I mean, yep. well, and they're, they're going to need therapy for something either way. Oh. I think everybody should do therapy. Oh, yes. I'm all pro therapy. Here's oh, for sure. Um, I have over the years like when I was when I was a younger mom, I really struggled. I think that there's been a lot more that has brought me to this place of saying, "You know what? I probably am doing some things wrong with my children, but there is no person out there, no mother, no father that hasn't done something that, to their child." not on purpose. We don't ever do it on purpose, but that are going, Oh, that's therapy down the road. Like, uh -huh. yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Well, and part of that's a gift to our kids. <laughs> At least that's how I frame it. Because, <laughs> because like, I am a human. Yeah. Like in my, in my, some of my like worst slash maybe best mothering moments, I show my humanity to my daughter. Like she learns and understands that I'm not just mom. I'm, I'm a human. And right. so when I'm able to cry because she's really mean that like, I don't know. And then, then part the, 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 the gremlins in my mind are like, well, now she's going to have that disorder where you, you know, the child parenting the parent. And I'm like, mom, I don't I, try, I honestly try to figure out what Enneagram I'm making my children. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, because you're like with it, you see kind of what it is. So, um, well, uh, I digress. We are getting closer to the end. So I feel like <laughs> we need to do the um, giveaway. I don't even know who's, I feel like we should wait until we have a little bit more um, people watching. I don't even know who's watching anymore. Um, I can't keep track. I don't, I try not to pay attention to it anyway. <laughs> um, so the giveaway, this is how it works for anybody that's still watching or is popping on and watching. The giveaway works this way. Adam kind of pulled a question from what Lisa has been talking about. We're going to ask the question. You put the answer below. If we don't get it while we're still on, then whoever does answer even after the fact, then we'll connect with them and I'll connect with you, Lisa, to try to get them the um, journal. But the uh, giveaway is for a what's true about your, what's true about you journal. And do you want to show it? It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Did you design it? 
no. Oh. I, oh, yeah. and inside there's I'm like I'm trying to show you with my phone. Like, ah, let me find one of the pictures. It's there's it's hand it's hand painted. So my friend Amy at Wellspring Art, you can follow her on Instagram. So good. She painted um, ten truth statements as well. So there, here's one of them. Like so oh, beautiful. Yes. Says, yeah, he is faithful. And so there's there's five I am truth statements and five he is truth statements. Okay. And then a bunch of scripture to back all that up, writing prompts to figure out if you even believe that that's true. And yeah, so it is. It's the most gorgeous thing ever. Yeah. And I, I, mean, just, that I can you put it on your Facebook page. But then when I went to your website, it was, I was like, that's gorgeous. I really um, like that. So yeah. I'm finishing out my current journal. So I might have to get that one as my next. There you go. My next one. Okay. So for everybody that's watching, the question that we have pulled together um, for Lisa is what was the name of the radio show that Lisa co-hosted on Z99 and a half? And I'll give you some, not clues, but it was Lisa and Ryan and Darren, the three of them show and when was the show on can you still look at can you still listen to like past episodes yeah i believe there's a podcast still out roaming around that okay. you can find um wherever you get your podcasts um and i was about to give away the answer no, but stop. it's the name of the show <laughs> is the podcast and there are so many, some really great episodes and there's still a chance that this radio show could come back oh. um, but for now we've been We've been furloughed, so it's I know, but it sounds like you've had enough to do. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Just trying to get this all going and everything. So for all of those that are um kind of watching, where can we where can viewers follow Lisa and or the I am mother of the year? Um, so on Facebook and Instagram, there's a page you could follow. It's at I am mother of the year. Okay. Um, the, the Facebook group is um, like facebook.com slash groups, which is I am mother of the year. And right. um, all of that's available on my website, which is I am mother of the year .com. And I'm at least craft on Instagram. You're all, here's the thing. They tell you to have everything do the same. So good on you for actually listening. Yes. <laughs> because that's what you're supposed to do. I love this picture, by the way. I remember when you deciding to do it. Yeah. Um, and I just love it because that's how it should feel like the joy and love of being a mom and just having fun. And I loved that picture. So anyway, so you can do her website. Um before I had one question that I did want to ask real quick, um, because it was one of my better questions that I had, which was um, what advice do you have for moms who struggle with feeling like they are not doing a good job? Mm. Okay, this is a tough one, but uh, it's going to go back to what's true about you. And so um, I'm going to try to do this clearly and succinctly because I have like a whole 30 minute talk on this. <laughs> oh, and we have like five minutes. Go! We don't have time for that. So let me tell you what it is. It's like there is some lie you are believing. That's that's the core of it is there is a deep seated lie that you are believing about who you are. And that like that's it. So it's usually an identity statement lie which is I am what I accomplish. Classic mom thing or what my kids accomplish. I am what other people think of me. Another classic mom thing or I am what um, what I have. And so that is, um, those are some of the core identity lies. And that's what I think. If you believe that you're not doing a good job, you got to dig like deeper, deeper, deeper until you can really like sit in that and figure out what is true about you. Because it's not enough to go, nope, nope, let's replace that with the truth. I'm doing a great job. Because that's going to come back over and over and over until you really get to the root of the issue. So um, part of that is really scary work, but it's work worth doing. And um, I think I can help with that, too, if you if you want to jump in. And the boot camp comes into play. Boot camp, exactly. 
When is the next boot camp? Do you have you decided on? I think we're gonna go for fall. So probably August, mid-August. It might just depend on when school gets back in session and all of that. But well, I will try to make sure that you tag me or and and or let me know because I'd love to post it on our get to know your neighbor pay, page so that people can because I want this to be kind of a succinct thing. We haven't started. We were talking about actually doing a um, get to know your neighbor Facebook group so that yeah. we can go back to that and we can kind of post what all these people are doing and stuff like that. So we're going to work on that. But Lisa, I so am thankful that you came on. We are wanting to get more people like you. So our last question of the evening is what, who do you think we should interview or who would you watch? Mm -hmm. um, give Ryan a hard time because he said if you were on, he'd watch, but I think I saw Lauren on for a minute. So <laughs> um, it kind of relates to Lauren a little bit more than Ryan, but um, who do you think that we should interview? Well, this is actually someone that I've only met briefly through the All Words, but his name is Gabe Glover. Do you know Gabe Glover? No. I looked at him. He's like a... When I first heard about him, he's he was like 17 and playing at Carnegie Hall. Like he's a brilliant, brilliant musician. And I and so when I was thinking about, wow, who should we watch um, and who should you interview? I love that there is there are younger people who are just coming into their own and just going for it. And so I think he's one of those one of those people. OK. I will try to connect with him. We are asking any time to like connect. Like if you, are you friends with him on Facebook or Instagram? Yes, or yep, I'll tag him. Yes. Okay, good. Cause that would be, that would be great. I love musicians. I wish that I knew more. Yeah. yeah. Because they're just so talented. I mean, <laughs> I'd like to say I could sing or play an instrument, but I cannot. Um, yeah. I'm not that skilled. I'm, <laughs> I'm skilled with words. That's about it. There you go. But <laughs> I know. Well, I appreciate that so much because we are trying to grow the the page and or the following and stuff. And so we want to get more of those guests that people will be interested in. Um, for any of you that are um, still tuned in on Thursday, we're going to interview Chris Hebert. He, I've been giving, I've been given People have been telling me that I need to represent Fisher's High School, not just Hamilton Southeastern High School. Oh. So with that being said, see, I went to HSE, so it's kind of hard because I know a lot of people from HSE. Yeah. So he is a um, assistant or co-baseball uh, coach for the Fisher's baseball team, and then he also is an area um, director for Chili's. So... We're excited about that. He also happens to be a neighbor of mine, but we're excited to represent the Fishers. So for anybody that's interested, check us out on Thursday. Um, if you want to go back and watch um, our interview with Lisa, it will be on Facebook. We will also get it posted to YouTube as well. And then um, usually it's on our website as well, which is lisaandhomes.com. But if you want to check any of these interviews, if you just tuned in and you didn't get to watch the whole thing with Lisa, go back and watch it, make comments. It sounds like we didn't have anybody at this point who guessed what the answer is. I'm not going to give the answer, but for anybody that answers later to the question, then we'll connect with Lisa um, and get that to you. But Lisa, I know I've now said this multiple times, but I love what you're doing. I think that it's a movement that needs to happen so that all of us can feel that we are in this together and it's okay to have struggles and not feel like you're not doing a good job because we are all doing an excellent job in whatever way that looks. And so thank you for your voice um, and your drive to want to tell people because it's not an easy job. Nope. <laughs> It's not, it's not, but it's, uh, oh my gosh, it's my pleasure and completely life-giving to me. So That's I'm so always happy to do it. 
Well, I appreciate it. We will, of course, stay tuned with Lisa. And if she does anything or posts anything, we'll try to share it as well. But thank you, everybody, for watching. And you guys all have a great night. Bye.